little weekend to Treasure Beach and on the way down, I was telling a friend of mine that we were going down, I said, sometimes I have this thought. My grandfather has this diary and he's dead a long time ago. And in the diary, there's an entry and it says, went to Frenchman's Cove, fell in love, saw a man drown. And since I'm a little girl, I've read that line over and over and over again, and it's just been very traumatic and very woo for me. So anyway, I'm going down and I tell my friend this little thing, and we all go down to Treasure Beach. And Saturday comes, and we go to Pelican. And I guess many of you are like this, going to the country, so I have 10 different outfits for the day, just in case. So I go to Pelican, have a great day, and I come back to my villa now to change, to go down to the beach that's by my villa. And before I go down, I change my earrings. Somebody else in the crowd has a pair of earrings on that I had on before. And I changed into my eyes of protection, which are similar to these, but a little bit smaller. And I am going down to the beach strictly for modeling purposes. I have no intention of swimming. I did everything I had to do at Pelican. My friend didn't swim, that's his business. I'm just going to chill. And I go down to the beach, lie down on the sand. My friend goes in the water and I'm chilling by myself. A good way out and I'm watching everybody in the water. Smoking my spliff, of course and I see him close to a group of ladies, two ladies, and I'm laughing to myself and I'm saying, this jamas, now I bet you him, he talks a super lot. He has to make a conversation with you if he's beside you. So I said, I bet you going to chat up these ladies now, so I'm watching to see what's going on. Anyway, so I'm sitting there still and he's motioning to me to come into the water. And I have no interest in going to the water. Worse, I'm not gonna come when you call me. Do not call me, because I'm not gonna come. So I'm chilling on the sand still. And he calls me again to come in the water. So I wait a few seconds and I get up now and I say, all right, I'm just gonna go for two minutes and come back out. So I go in the water and I don't know if any of you have ever been to Treasure Beach. This is a side by Billy's Bay, so it's further than Jake's. It's all the way around and it's a little bit rough, I don't know. Have any of you been there, Treasure Beach? Yeah, yeah? so you know it's rough at night, you swimmers? All right, cool. So, I go in the water and it's very shallow, messing around, and there are about seven people in the water and two kids are in there and all of a sudden this little boy starts screaming, help, 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 on the top of his lungs, screaming. And you know that story, the little boy cried, well, if I'm thinking he's just messing around with his little sister, so I'm like, Shh, you know? He's like, no, she's drowning. And her, his sister starts screaming and they're shouting to the shore because the rest of the family is there and saying, she's drowning, she's drowning. So I'm in the water now and I look around me, a quick scan, I'm a 0.5 second scanner, and I look and everybody to my left, nobody's moving. To my right, the person is like, we are here, they're at Manor Park Pharmacy door, so that's pretty far up the shore, and the lady's drowning. And I look out and I literally see her dead, I see her life, I see everything in front of me. And I was like, boy, I couldn't see it. I refused to be on the beach with a dead body today. I couldn't do it. So I went off in the water. And going in there, in my head, I knew that half of the people that go to save somebody will die. I know that I'm not a lifesaver. I didn't do life-saving classes. I'm not a weightlifter. I don't do any form of exercise. I'm very lazy but I consider myself a good swimmer. So I'm going out there and I'm seeing the lady and her sister is, you know, struggling with her. And it's like time is frozen, all I'm seeing is this thing and I'm trying to get to her and the waves are just massive and it's very scary. And in my head I know, okay, 
you made your own. So, and I, I did psychology as an aside. So, approaching her, I'm like, ma'am, I'm coming towards you. It's gonna be okay. Just be calm, just relax. Don't fight the water, just kind of, you know, let your body go. And when I come to you, don't pull me, just hold on to me, cause I'm gonna have you, just, you know, relax. And I'm praying that God, please don't make me dead out here. God, don't make me dead. And I'm going to her and her sister is frantic and her sister is there and we, she comes now towards me and upon approach I realize that this is a big person. She's not, you know, small. And it's like she's forgotten that her sister is there and she starts coming towards me like she sees Superman out of the water. And she holds on to me and I'm trying to bear her weight and I realize that, you know, it's too much, we're too far out and I don't know if we're going to make it. So I go under the water and try and bring my body up to try and, you know, give myself a second and to give her some more support. So we're there and to me the only thing I can do is to just try and keep her calm. That was my main focus. And her sister is there and they're in the beach of course. Maybe you'll ask where is the lifeguard? There is no lifeguard. They're like two, you know those round buoys in the water? Very far out from shore. So if we are here, then one is by the edge there. So we have to get her there. That is my only aim right now is to get her to this buoy. So we're going towards it. By now she's tired because she cannot swim, I don't know. Um, if, again, if you've been out there, it's kind of shallow, but there are a lot of rocks so you can get tricked. You can just go down into a deep hole and you not know what's going on. Anyway, long story short, finally we get her to the first buoy and I said, listen, just hold on because to me now, she's now alive, okay? So just, yeah, she can live. That's all I want to know. She's not dead yet. But now my thing is, she must not die on me. If she died on me, I would die. That was not gonna happen to me on that day. So I said, just hold on to the buoy and there is a string that attaches it to the other one. I'm trying to explain to her to just pull the string towards you. Not really like go with the string because unless you can swim, you can't go. You have to pull the floater to you and then go. So she doesn't get that. She goes off another six feet to the other one. So we now have to be after her. By this time, finally, the party has heard what has happened. The husband or whoever comes tumbling into the water. He comes, he grabs her up now and he's struggling with her. With her. She's playing. And by this time, it's like she's lifeless. Her head is down in the water, just down. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like, put your fucking head up. I'm screaming that. I'm screaming crazy bad words. Put your fucking head up, like. To me, it was nobody was thinking. There was nobody clear. Everyone was just very confused and very panicked. Anyway, so by this time now, I'm a little bit out from them and I'm on a reef. And I, I can tiptoe on it and they're all very taller than me. I'm not very tall. I have on heels. And I'm saying, come over to this side, just come to me and you'll be okay. Because from this point, we can just go into shore because I am unsure. I am alive. Just come and you will be alive too. So they're making their way, but there is another big cavern. She's now trying to get to me once more, her lifesaver. And she jumps out of him and she's coming towards me and she's on me. Anyway, finally. All, all this time, my whole focus is one, two, three, three people. One is always her, the other is either her sister or the man. And I'm trying to get back now. When I turn around, all I feel is a hand on me, a hand grab me. And when I turn around, there is this man and it's like, I felt like, Jesus, God. And he's like, I don't, I don't, it's like in a movie. I can't describe it. And they had made a human chain that came out into the water. 
and they got us and she was fine we went on to the shore i exited straight right for my towel and every belonging off of that beach i went straight to my villa i had nothing more to do with that beach for the rest of the whole weekend i saw them at dinner i did not see them it was just too much for me but what i realized that was the silver lining in the cloud when i went up to restore myself after went in the mirror i don't know to see if i was alive to check my mascara probably i didn't want to see if my mascara was messed up because that was a thought i was like fuck i'm gonna mess up my hair that was my biggest thought in my one second i just done my hair and i had no intention of swimming i think a lot in a lot of in small seconds okay so anyway i'm in the mirror and i'm looking and i had my earrings on and they were my eyes of protection and to me that's wow it was like god being with you because it's the eye of ra the eye of horus whatever you believe your cross it's the same thing as having it on so i'm just a jeweler and had to help somebody that was drowning and that's my long story short